Brown and I teach PE at Morgan County Primary School. We teach K through two. This is my para pro, this is Miss Pam. And today we are gonna show you some fun ideas that you can use your trash and turn it into treasure. Things that you saved and you weren't sure what to do with it. If you're like us, you don't throw anything away. So we're gonna show you what to do with some of this stuff and some games and activities that we've created. We're going to show you with some equipment that we have found in our equipment room. This game is called Roller Coaster and it's a game you play with a partner and you need just one of your pool noodles if you got one. We used a hula hoop to, for our marker and then we have a small piece of PVC pipe. We just need a little stick that'll stand up or you can use a piece of chalk. You also need a marble, because that's what's gonna go down the roller coaster. The pool noodle is the roller coaster, and you'll drop the marble down, and your goal is to try to knock the stick over, or the chalk, to get a point. Do you want the stick or the chalk? Chalk, okay. So I'll be the catcher, so that the marble does, in case it jumps over the hula hoop. So she has to line it up on the edge of the hula hoop, and then aim her roller coaster so that when the marble travels down, we're trying to knock over the chalk. All right. Oh. Now it's my turn. Can I put it right there? And that's Roller Coaster. The next trash to treasure that we have, we took old pool noodles that were torn and broken and we cut some of them and into little slices. And then we took the other ones that were torn up and we glued them together with two on the bottom. And then we cut holes, little slices inside the pool noodle that goes across here. And we just stuck popsicle sticks and I glued them in there, I hot glued them in there. This is called a dinosaur. And this is not my idea. I, have, I will give you the credit to who this belongs to on the, on the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, but this is how our kids can keep score for some of the games that they play so that they can actually see the score. So when you get a point, that's what the pool noodle pieces are. And you just keep up with your points. I start on one side and she starts on the other. And then you can just stack your points up. And this is called a dino score because we thought it looked like a dinosaur with his blades on the back. Is that what they're called? <laughs> trash to treasure, we have actually taken an old CD or a DVD and we glued a marble on one side with hot glue and I got a cap from a two liter bottle or a Gatorade or whatever you have and, <laughs> and I put, and I glued that on. So one side, the marble side goes on the floor. This is a homemade timer so that our kids can time each other how long so we don't have to worry about them counting and nobody counts the same speed and that kind of thing. So we use these as our timers. So 
if Miss Pam is going to behave herself, she's going to jump on our, this is our yard sale find. We find these at yard sales and buy them up, the mini trampolines. And if it's your turn to jump, the other partner, it's your turn to spin the timer. Okay? So I will spin this on the marble. All right, so it's your turn to jump on the trampoline. Okay. I'll spin the timer and watch it, okay? And I'm gonna watch the timer when it stops, that's when your turn is over. Stop, and then she can step off and then it would be my turn to jump and it'll be her turn to spin the timer. Now we play with some equipment that we've manufactured from our equipment room. And it's just stuff that we've used for this game. This has, the game is set up like this and it has a poly spot on the bottom. We have a dome cone, a dice, and then these are our mice and it has a clothespin. And then we used flags from our flag belts with the with the little velcro on it. So to make your mouse, you use the clothespin and you clip it on to the end of the flag tag. And this is his tail and this is his head. So in the game, this poly spot is the cheese. This dome cone is the trap. And then you use the dice to roll to see when you catch the mouse. So one person, you could play with four people here and you'll have three people being the mouse and one person being the catcher. Okay, so do you wanna be the catcher? Sure. Okay, so I don't need a mouse if I'm the catcher. So we just put those to the side. So if you have more people playing, you'll have more mouse heads on the cheese. So you put the mouse's head on the cheese and you back up so that the tail is stretched all the way back because the mouse's job is to run and you pull his tail as fast as you can, but he can't fly up in the air. He has to run straight back off the cheese. So I just put his head, put him right here. So sometimes we have the kids sit on their knees and then he can just run back into his little house. He's trying not to get his head chopped off by the mouse trap. Now the mouse catcher, she holds the mouse trap in one hand and she holds the dice in the other. So she has to ask all the players if they're ready because we don't want anybody's fingers to get caught by the mouse trap. So she cannot roll the dice until we have all said that we're ready. So I'm gonna make sure I'm ready and I'm gonna hold the tail and I have to pull him straight back because he has to run on the floor. And when she rolls the dice, if it rolls on a one, or a six, she can take the trap and slap it down on there and try to catch my mouse. If it rolls on anything but a one or a six, she can't catch me, okay? Ready? I'm ready. All right, what was the numbers? One or a six, yes, that was a five. five. Shaking the dice. Oh, sorry. Are you ready? No. Okay. Yes. Okay. Five is popular. Five is popular. <laughs> oh. And if I don't go fast enough, she catches him. And now once if you catch a mouse, then we trade and it goes around the circle. It's not who you catch. So if whoever, whoever's turn it is next, 
whoever's turn it is next is who would we would pass it around the circle and now she'll be the mouse and I'll be the catcher. Now, if you don't have all of this stuff, we made our own. We got a little bowl from the dollar store and I found a, some dice from a game. You can use post-it notes for the cheese. And then I just had some strips of fabric and put that, then you can make your mouse sit on the cheese. And so can your friends put theirs on there. And then we can still play without having the equipment from the equipment room. You can find this stuff at your house. Okay. striking activity and we have a balloon and then sometimes you don't have the money to get those cute lollipop paddles from the equipment catalogs so we found some other things that you could use so from Dollar Tree we found some fly swatters and then I had an old coat hanger and I took some actually had some pantyhose and I cut it and I just twisted the pantyhose into this triangle shape and then I twisted it together and then I just pulled the pantyhose and pulled a knot around it to make a little paddle. So either of these can be used to strike a balloon and they still get the same striking activity as if you had those expensive lollipop paddles. treasure items. We have two liter drink bottles. We use these for throwing targets. We use them for rolling targets, like we roll bowling balls at them and they can use these as bowling pins. We use the green ones at Christmas time. These are the Christmas trees and they throw snowballs that we made out of socks. There's, these are just regular socks stuffed with probably other socks are stuffed in there and we use those as the snowballs and they throw them at the Christmas trees for our Christmas game. But you can use two liter bottles for all kind of targets. So you just set them down and then we do throwing. Oh, your turn. Oh, good shot. And that's, those are some things you can get, people can save for you. Um, we've had people save two liter bottles at party times and when they have class parties and then they just bring them to us and we can get plenty of them within just a few weeks. equipment that we've made from trash to treasure is we've taken some old milk jugs and we cut the bottoms off and we just put some tape on here in case it was sharp and these are nice homemade catchers we also catch with bean bags and you can use sock balls that you made um, we have some homemade bean bags that I made out of a sock that I folded and then I just wrap duct tape around it so it's just a nice flat bean bag. So I just folded the sock like this. And then I just taped all the way around it until it was sealed all the way up. And it's not too heavy, it catches nice, it still has enough weight that you can throw with it but it's just another thing that you can, I'm sure everybody has lots of mismatched socks and you can also get these people to save these. that 
we made out of trash from the equipment room is we made an air hockey table. So we had some random pieces of PVC pipe that we actually used for the limbo sticks. And we used broken hula hoops that we did not throw away. And we just stuck those in the ends to make our area where you get your point, okay? So we actually later on bought some of the air hockey pushers, but we didn't have these at the beginning when we first made this, because you can buy these at Five Below or Walmart and stuff like that. We used things that we could find in our equipment room. Uh, Pam has a Dollar Tree bowl. I think you can get four for a dollar. They're just little plastic bowls. And then I found an old block from my kids' toys and we can use that. And we use furniture sliders for our pups. So she's got one kind over there that we're using. This has the plastic on one side. We just put a bucket of them out and they can pick the kind of pups they want to use, whichever they think. So they can decide how they're going to keep score. We just wanted to show you how we made the game. And then we can just, it keeps it inside. And it's a and it's a homemade air hockey. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you for watching this session from EPEW 2020. We're saving the next few minutes for you to ask those final questions before we log off. If you have any questions afterwards, please reach out to the presenter or send a message to EPEW through our website. Don't forget that we have more amazing sessions going on. Head over to our website, epew-cp.weebly.com, and look for the virtual EPEW 2020 tab. You can also access the presentations on YouTube by typing in the hashtag EPEW2020. We'd like to thank the amazing EPEW committee for all their hard work over this past year. This event would not have been possible without their dedication, commitment, and volunteering their time to providing high quality professional development. Don't forget about our other events like our socials and share times. Links can be found on our website. Remember our motto for EPEW, come to learn, leave as family. Thank you for joining our family today.